Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again, and this month marks the 80th anniversary of the first appearance of my favorite hero with flexible morals, Plastic Man. And as such, here on the channel, along with all the normal stuff that I do, I'm going to be doing a little celebration of the 80th anniversary of Plastic Man. And we're going to be kicking that off with the review of the DC Direct 1999 Plastic Man variant action figure. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy open and then we'll take a closer look. Plastic Man, aka Patrick Eel O'Brien, was created by cartoonist Jack Cole. He first appeared in Police Comics No. 1, published by Quality Comics in August of 1941, 80 years ago. And then he was acquired by DC in 1956, where he has been ever since. In that time, he has had multiple self titled series, as well as appeared in team books such as various iterations of the Justice League, the Secret Six, Injustice, and more recently, the Terrifics, while also making appearances in multiple animated series such as the Super Friends, the Justice League Action, Batman the Brave and the Bold, and starring in his own Saturday morning series, The Plastic Man Comedy Adventure Show in 1979. And here he is in action figure form! Alright, so now that this guy is open and you guys have all the background, let's go ahead and take a closer look at him. Right on guys, so here you have him in all his glory, and we're just going to go ahead and start with the articulation on this guy, and then we'll put him on the round table and get a closer look at the sculpt. So, now, in terms of articulation on this guy, again, he's from 1999, so he's not going to have all the bells and whistles of your modern figures, but starting off at the head, we do get a head that goes all the way around. Uh, no up and down to speak up on him, but his goggles do slide down real nice, like so. On these arms here, now you're going to have to be careful with them because they are made out of a basically just a rubber plasticky material, which is fitting for Plastic Man, you know? Um, but you do get the normal all the way around on both arms, but do be careful with this guy whenever you are doing this articulation because, you know, because of the material they are made out of, they could pop out of there very easily. Then with our hands that we've got, we got these really cool variant hands on him. This one has a clamp, which does actually open and close, which is very, very nice. And they can go all the way around and come right out if you want them to. I don't know why you would, but you can do that if you like. Again, because of the kind of rubber material of these, it makes that very simple. And it is actually nice that they didn't try to put a harder plastic at the end of it, because then with these arms you would end up breaking these guys off, as the hands themselves are made out of a harder material. But I really appreciate and like both hands that are on here. So there is no midsection articulation, as you can see. And then when we come on down to the legs, he's got at the hip, and he can go all the way around like so. Whoop! And then moving on down to the knees, you've got, eh, not quite 90 degrees on this guy, you know, and no ankle articulation going down to the kind of flesh-toned booty feet that Plastic Man is known for having. And that is just about all of the articulation that we have on this guy, which again, for a figure from this time, that is still a little bit limited, but it's not especially limited, and it's about what I was expecting. So in terms of the sculpt on this figure, Again, it's very simple, it's very streamlined, but it is well done for what it is. We do have some nice kind of sculpting in the midsection for the kind of muscles of Plastic Man, which again, he's Plastic Man, so those are not always there, but because he can kind of pick and choose what body type and shape he wants to have, it is nice that they've included them, and this is a much more classic Plastic Man look. He's a little bit thinner, he's a little bit leaner. In modern day comics, they kind of bulk him up just a little bit more, but if I'm being honest, I actually kind of prefer this version. And with this version of the character, the legs also have far less kind of 
dimension or far less uh, detail in terms of the musculature. They very much look like plastic legs, and that is very in keeping with the traditional and classic look of Plastic Man. Now the arms, again, in the biceps, we often see that Plastic Man is a little bit more muscular in his upper body, and on this one they've kept that in the biceps while electing to kind of go more simple and smooth with the forearms to kind of give that effect of them stretching out slightly, because as you can see, his arms are a little bit longer, and in fact one of them is longer than the other, which, you know, on most figures would be a minus, but on this figure, it absolutely works fantastically. And then when we get into the kind of, you know, plasticized appendage hands, they look very good for what they are too. Again, it's one of those things where with this figure they had a lot to work with in terms of like, you don't actually need Plastic Man to look realistic, especially when he's making these crazy shapes with his hands. I do appreciate that the claw hand has the little kind of ratchet teeth type things inside of it for gripping, and it actually does move and articulate, as I said in the previous section. I do appreciate that, and I like the general shape and vibe of it, and with the hammer, I like that it's something a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more simple. Now, one thing I will state about the hammer hand is that you can definitely see the mold lines on the plastic, and while he is a plastic man and constructed of plastic, you're not really supposed to see those, so I do kind of wish that those had been maybe sanded down or kind of smoothed out just a little bit more, but it's not such a big thing that I feel that it hurts the overall figure. Now in terms of his costume, the belt is actually sculpted in, which I definitely appreciate. On a figure that has this little bit of kind of sculpting and detail on it, those little touches are extremely nice. Likewise, on his front midsection, the kind of cross lacing of his costume is also sculpted and it makes it pop really, really well against the kind of sculpted muscles they have. Likewise, if you look at his face when you remove the goggles, it is an excellent, excellent sculpt. It has that kind of smooth plastic feel that you expect from Plastic Man, but at the same time having enough detail that he doesn't actually look like a mannequin or anything like that. He looks more just kind of like a very fresh-faced young man, and despite the fact that Plastic Man not only in the real world is 80 years old, but in the comics, because of a little story called The Obsidian Age, is exceedingly old, you know, he has the ability to look the age he wants, and he chooses to go with a bit more of a fresh-faced young man. In fact, the look that he has in this appearance and in the general comics is much more appealing than what he looked like as Eel O'Brien. Also, the hair. Again, this is a figure that doesn't have a whole lot of sculpting because of the character that it is, but the hair is very nicely sculpted with great textures that really make it pop when it hits the light. So then, moving on into the paint job, Again, the paint job on this figure, while it is minimal, is excellently done. The belt, all the lines, because it is sculpted, it was very easy for them to keep the paint in the right areas. The black on the laces is very nicely kept. And again, in his hair, we have some really nice blue highlights that lets all that sculpt stand out really, really well. And then, of course, in the face, where we have the goggles down, you actually get to have a little bit more paint with the eyes, and the eyes look really fantastic. All in all, the sculpting, the paint job, everything on this figure, while again, it is very simple and it is very streamlined, all of it is exceedingly well done, and the detail is there where it matters, which is really what makes this figure rock as much as it does. It doesn't have to be overly complicated, it doesn't have to be overly exaggerated or overly sculpted or overly painted, but where it matters, the detail and the care is definitely put in. There you have it, children of the screen, the 1999 DC Direct Plastic Man action figure variant. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, it is not the most articulated figure, even for 1999. And it's not the best Plastic Man figure that we've got from DC Direct or the subsequent toy lines. But, as a Plastic Man fan, I am very happy to have this guy in my collection, and I cannot wait to put him on the shelf with my other DC figures. Again, like, there's a lot of cool things about him. I really do like the, uh, you know, kind of alternative hands on this variant. Uh, I will admit... Whenever I first got this figure, I definitely thought that the arms were going to be a little bit more flexible, maybe have some bendy wire or something like that in there, as opposed to just being like, you know, inflatable, like, waving arm dude guy going over here. But, 
it's still pretty awesome and I could probably put some bendy wire in them. It's not that big a mod, especially because the hands just pop right off very, very easily. Again, it's an older figure, but I'm very happy to have it in my collection. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you like this video, please leave a like and share it with some friends. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you can check out all the dope content I'll have coming out in the future. Furthermore, make sure to head back here for my next Plastic Man video, because as I said, this month we are going to be celebrating the 80th anniversary of my little favorite friend here, and I will have more content on him coming out shortly. Thank you very much, children of the screen. I hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum.